Hello everyone, welcome to an interesting episode of Watchtower Examination. This one is not basically about the Watchtower, even though I will make some references to the Jehovah's Witnesses because they actually have a role to play in this. All my life, from I was a little boy, I had a little issue with people celebrating Christmas on the 25th of December, knowing fully well that Jesus was not born on that day. But as a boy, naturally, I loved Christmas for many reasons, not to mention, including, of course, the gifts that I used to get. I look forward to my toys at Christmas time. But as I grew older, as I started looking into the subject, I came to the conclusion that Christmas and Easter, but especially Christmas, will not be celebrated by this guy. And I actually got annoyed at Christians celebrating. Interestingly, it was an ex-Jehovah's Witness, Mike and Kim, you know, those who are familiar with the ex-JW community are fully aware of the Mike and Kim channel, but I'm mentioning them because I'm sending this video also to my, to all my contacts who are, who would not know about the XJW community, which is why I'm introducing them. Mike said something to me, which was rather interesting. Colossians 2.16, let no man judge you in meat or drink or holidays. You know, it, uh, it, it, it spoke to me in a way that it never did. So that for several years, I do not celebrate Christmas. But in recent years, the last three or four years, I stopped condemning those who do. But now I've made a complete U-turn and I've made the decision just this morning. I have fully made up my mind that I will, as of this day, as of this year, start celebrating Christmas and Easter again. And I'll tell you why. I decided to do a video explaining. But this morning I got up and I sent a voice note, a WhatsApp voice note message to a friend of mine. She and I have discussed this over the years. We both do not celebrate Christmas. And I thought I would share with her why I made the U-turn. So I've decided to kill two birds with one stone. Instead of doing an, another video explaining, I'll just use the very WhatsApp message that I sent to my friend to explain. Here goes. I don't know if you ever saw Professor Walter Veith um, series on tampering with the Bible where Westcott and Hart actually have this thing against Jesus. The people hate Jesus so much that they have made an effort to deny his divinity. And so they cleverly try to use, they tamper with scriptures taking out verses that prove that Jesus is God. And uh, it, it's a rather interesting thing. I don't know if I told you about the time when there was demon possession in some students at Victor Dixon High School. And the demons were shouting, Jesus is a fraud and a liar. Jesus is a fraud and a liar. And the vice principal asked him, but what about Calvary? You don't remember it? The demon said, like it was yesterday. I believe that Satan is haunted by the memory of what Jesus did. Think about it. Adam and Eve sinned. Satan accomplished something. Man fell. 
Then he was to hear the horrible news that I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head. The prophecy made that Jesus is coming to destroy you. Imagine how Satan felt when Jesus came. He devised a scheme to kill him by getting the Herod to do the decree to kill all firstborn babies because he is coming to crush his head. Can't deal with it. Then came Calvary, Satan hoping that he could keep Jesus in the grave. Well, you know, before that he tried to tempt him. Because if Jesus could sin, then the plan of salvation would have been messed up. That didn't work. So with the crucifixion, he hoped that the grave would have held him. That didn't work. This tunnel, can you imagine how haunted Satan is? Now, I am doing a ministry for Jehovah's Witnesses. They are also anti-Christ. It's a diabolical scheme that they are running. All this thing about Jehovah. And it's important to use God's name. Look here, I watched a series again by this guy. I don't remember his first name, Lewis, a pastor. Exodus from Egypt, where he's looking on the truth behind hip-hop. Actually, the truth behind hip-hop is, is a series. One of them is Exodus from Egypt. But he's looking on the underworld of the hip-hop, how, how the devil is using music to spread his message. And to control young people. And he spoke about a hip hop art artist who's telling people, you know, to stop worship God and stop calling on the name of Jesus. No, he never said stop worshiping Jesus, but stop calling on the name of Jesus. Satan hate the name. Every time Christians call on the name of Jesus, genuinely, of course, the demons tremble. They hate the name. The Bible says that there is no other name given among men by which you must be saved. Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Satan hate it. The name by which mankind is going to be saved, the people that he's trying to, be, to devour, going to be saved by the name of Jesus. And then he will be defeated by the name and will have to bow to Jesus. And he knows the time is coming. There is this anti-Jesus, this anti-Christ scheme from Satan's world. So when the Jehovah's Witnesses push Jehovah, 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 Jehovah's Witnesses are not saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And it works. When they talk to Jehovah, Jehovah's Witnesses, how do speak about Jesus? And when they talk about Jesus, it's to tell you that Jesus is not God. They also deny the divinity of Christ. That is a scheme. Follow me now. Another thing that is happening is that when Jehovah's Witnesses, many Jehovah's Witnesses who leave the watchtower become atheists. God is not real. There's no God. The Bible is a lie. The Bible is a fantasy book. And they try to go to history. Oh, how they would be happy if they could wipe Jesus from history. But there is something that stands as a testimony against the atheists, against the Jehovah's Witnesses against Satan. And you know what that thing is? The celebration 
of Christmas and Easter. The very fact that countries the world over pause from regular commercial activity to celebrate the coming of Christ is a nail in the coffin, as it were, for the liars who are trying to suggest that Christ did not exist. That the world pauses to celebrate the death of Christ and his resurrection, which seals the defeat of Satan, is a barrier to denying the existence of Christ and of God. And Satan must hate it. That the demons must be miserable at Christmas time and at Easter time. Follow me now. I have not made any change about the paganism. I have made no change about the birthday of Christ being not December 25. I have made no change about the thing that annoys me most about Christmas, Santa Claus. All of those things still stand. But amid all of that, joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Think about what that does to Satan. And if people will sing that hymn every Christmas time, I say, sing on. And haunt the hell out of Satan. Let them be reminded that their end is coming. Let them be reminded that Jesus came. And at Easter time, let them be reminded of the resurrection. So that these, th this is bigger than what you and I have been talking about. At least that is my new position. So, there you have it. I really should have known that there was more behind the Watchtower's attack on Christmas and on Easter than meets the eye. Well, better late than never. Hello, Winston here. Just telling you thanks for tuning in for this video and encouraging you to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to hit the bell so that you will be notified when new content is uploaded. There is more to clicking the like button than just suggesting you enjoyed the video. The more likes that a video gets, the more YouTube shows it to non-subscribers. And the more that happens, the more Jehovah's Witnesses are reached. The videos have proven to help Jehovah's Witnesses so that one little act can go a far way. So go ahead, click that like button. It helps. Love you all. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.